Morning guys, Mohan here. In today's episode of 72 hours solo 7 I want to talk about beast crafting and early mapping. Because in the current patch you can utilize these two very well together and I would recommend to do so. Pre best theory uh, completing the atlas in solo cell phone was well, very tedious and uh, took, yeah, took very long and was very annoying because you only had a few ways to do it. Um, like the following you had to complete uh, tier by tier or just any map you want but then it's pure RNG based um, which maps you get and the usual method was to complete one map per tier and then go tier to tier uh, whenever you have all maps you complete all at once so you would um, farm tier 1 maps until you have all tier 2 maps then take over all tier 2 maps and farm tier 2 maps until you have all tier 3 maps while going for 1 tier 4, 1 tier 5, 1 tier 6 etc to get the plus 2 uh, drops from bosses to not lose on map drops um, well then you could go for 3 to 1 crafting and buy some maps from Zana but that was only a little help and did not really do so yeah it was really annoying and really tedious to get your atlas completion in solo cell found but beast crafting is making up for this and now i want to talk about that so before i explain the specific method i want to go over the very basics of beast crafting quickly because i think not everybody knows how it exactly it works so well, I expect you to know how to throw a net and how to capture a beast, but um, yeah, I go over the other stuff. Like, um, what do or what does a recipe actually need? So different recipes have different beasts I want and different kind of beasts. Like a recipe has the following um, list or the following possible beasts that it requires. It either needs a beast of a family of a beast, a group of a beast. Are a genus of a beast. So these are the three like big um, groups um, where you have a good range of beasts you can use. Then more specifically you need a specific magic class of a genus but these are for leveling recipes only. A specific uh, yellow mob so with a specific mod of either a family, a group or a genus or a very specific rare uh, so red rare mob yeah so that's are the different beasts you might need and yeah so we go for an example to explain it further as an example we use the horizon orb recipe this is the recipe we want to focus on mainly anyways and yeah i want to explain this further and give some uh, tips and tricks for this recipe later on so the Horizon of Recipe requires only bees level 70 plus, so tier 3 plus maps. Uh, it requires um, any rare creature of the deep, a rare creature of the deep with the Hurdle Dive mod, a rare creature of the deep with the Crushing Claws mod, and a rare creature of the Cephalopods with the Churning Claws mod. Um, you can as well use red beasts for these but i would not recommend it since these are mostly better used than other recipes where they are specifically needed and yeah so these beasts are the ones that you are looking for for the horizon of recipe i hope you know how beast crafting itself works now so that we can go for the farming method i want to talk about since completing the atlas is as earlier explained, tedious and time consuming, we want to speed things up. To do so, we need horizon orbs, lots of horizon orbs. And to farm lots of horizon orbs, we need lots of creatures of the deep and cephalopods. Luckily, cephalopods are creatures of the beast, so we can focus on them. Since we only need level 70 plus beasts, we can ignore map tier 1 and 2. Complete those maps entirely for the atlas bonus. So we want to focus on tier 3 to tier 8 maps approximately because those are the important maps for the early mapping process. Um, so we want to know where uh, or on which maps do um, cephalopods actually spawn. I ran down a few hundred maps to get some useful data and came up with an interesting list of maps. Of course a lot more maps uh, contain cephalopods but these maps are the actual interesting ones because all of these are in a line. We focus on the top left of the atlas and complete 
excavation, grotto, channel, underground sea, underground river and mineral pools. We will only get a few other maps while uh, running through these and find lots of cephalopods. Well, you can actually complete the maps around these to increase the chance of actually getting the map because that's how mapping actually works if uh, you want you can look into that deeper because when you complete a map um, your chance to drop that map while you run it is decreased because you have a higher chance of um, getting the other maps around that you did not allocate yet so sometimes it is useful to allocate maps that are around to not get them actually or not get them as much but uh, that's another theme well um, here's a list or here's visualized which maps you want to complete early to farm up horizon ops when you have well 100 150 horizon ops whatever you can um, pretty much complete your atlas um, or do it like piece by piece go through tier 2 maps or to tier 3 maps actually and use your horizon ops until you have all and complete them you don't need to farm until you have thousands of horizon orbs and do all at the same time. You can focus on some tiers and keep some tiers clean to farm more horizon orbs. I hope this method will help you completing your atlas. On the next video I want to talk about divination cards and how to farm them or how to utilize them. So see you there.